What we're going to be talking about today is Jung's modulus and its application in stress and strain graphs. Now, um, remember the equation that we looked at last time was um, looked like this. We had Jung's modulus being equal to stress over strain. Now, what I'm going to do is simply rearrange for the stress. And what I'm going to get is that stress is equal to Jung's modulus multiplied by the strain. Now what I'm going to do as well is just add a little zero um, like so and right underneath I'm going to write down y is equal to mx plus c. Now uh, imagine that we have a graph in which we have plotted stress on the y-axis and we have strain on the x-axis. We've taken some data points for both of those quantities and the result appears to be a straight line through the origin. If that's the case and if our stress is on the y-axis, our on the x-axis we have our strain and uh, what is left for our gradient of this graph is Young's modulus. So Young's modulus is the gradient in a stress against strain graph as long as the graph is a straight line through the origin. Now let's have a look at the stress and strain graphs for a few different types of materials. Okay, so let's have a look at the stress against strain graph for a ductile material. Now, what is a ductile material? A ductile material is any material that can be stretched into wires if you apply a tensile strength, uh, tensile force onto it. For example, you can have something like a piece of metal, and if you try and stretch this metal by applying a force, uh, this could be turned into a wire. In practice, this graph could be the stress against strain graph for a uh, piece of a metal wire that is, uh, that is being stretched by applying a certain stress onto it. So let's examine all of the aspects of this graph quite carefully. Now, in this very, very first region of this graph over here, you can see that the graph is initially essentially a straight line through the origin. This means that in this region over here, stress is proportional to strain. So we can write that stress is proportional to strain. Additionally, that means that force is going, the force, the apply force is going to be proportional to the extension. And in other words, Hooke's law is obeyed. So we can write that down. Hooke's law is obeyed. This is the region in which we have what is known as elastic deformation. So let's say that we apply this much stretch onto the material and then we remove the force. The material will go back to its original shape in a way that a spring that one stretch will go back to its original shape. So uh, let's just write down over here that this is a region of elastic deformation. Now, as soon as we reach a certain point, which is known as the elastic limit, so over here, we can see that as soon as we go past that elastic limit, the graph is no longer a straight line through the origin. And in fact, in this region, maybe we should use a different color for that, this whole region over here on the right is a region of plastic de deformation. So let's say that we have plastic deformation beyond this, beyond, beyond the elastic limit. Now, um, a couple of things are also really noticeable in the graph, and one is that there is a certain maximum stress that the material can withstand, and uh, this is the ultimate tensile strength. So this is this point over here. So let's make sure that we label this. This over here is the ultimate tensile strength. Remember, the ultimate tensile strength is actually the maximum stress 
So a common misconception is that the ultimate tensile strength is the maximum force applied. Nope, it's the maximal stress, which is the uh, maximum force per unit cross-sectional area. So maximum stress, I'm just going to underline this because this is very, very important. And uh, finally, once we are past this, the material will reach its breaking point like so. So this over here is the breaking point in, of the material. So just to summarize, in this first region over here, stress is proportional to strain, force is proportional to extension. In other words, Hooke's law is obeyed. And we have elastic deformation, in which the material goes back to its original shape. As soon as we go past the elastic limit, we have plastic deformation, in which the material does not go back to its original shape. We um, go through the ultimate tensile strength, which is the maximum stress that the material can withstand is this point over here. So let's make sure that we label this. This over here is the ultimate tensile strength. Remember, the ultimate tensile strength is actually the maximum stress. So a common misconception is that the ultimate tensile strength is the maximum force applied. Nope, it's the maximal stress, which is the uh, maximum force per unit cross-sectional area. So maximum stress, I'm just going to underline this because this is very, very important. And uh, finally, once we are past this, the material will reach its breaking point like so. So this over here is the breaking point in, of the material. So just to summarize, in this first region over here, stress is proportional to strain, force is proportional to extension. In other words, Hooke's law is obeyed. And we have elastic deformation, in which the material goes back to its original shape. As soon as we go past the elastic limit, we have plastic deformation, in which the material does not go back to its original shape. We um, go through the ultimate tensile strength, which is the maximum stress that the material can withstand before it reaches its breaking point. So this is the stress against strain graph for a ductile material. Now let's have a look at the behavior of brittle materials next. Once again, we have a stress against strain graph. Notice something really, really interesting. A brittle material exhibits elastic behavior and then just suddenly snaps. It suddenly reaches its breaking point. So this over here, the point in red is its breaking point like so and a brittle material will exhibit fully elastic behavior right until this point so remember elastic behavior means that Hooke's law is um is uh, fully obeyed let's just say that this over here is elastic deformation an example of a brittle material would be glass if we apply force onto it the, uh, the glass will um, ex um, extend a little bit, then it will just suddenly reach its breaking point. And finally, let's have a look at how do polymers behave. An example of a polymer is rubber. Now, all polymers consist of these long chains of molecules and they have a different behavior. You're going to notice that in the stress against strain curve, stress is not proportional to strain. And we know this because the graph is not a straight line through the origin. This also tells us that Hooke's law is not obeyed. Something that's really, really interesting though is that the material will go back to its original shape. So if you were to remove the force, in other words, if you were to unload the material, um, the stress against strain curve will look something like this. Let's test out my drawing skills. Oops, that was rubbish. Let's try again. So it will look something like this for to remove the actual force so um, if we when we apply the force we're following this blue curve if we remove the force we're following this 
red curve. But once again, really, really important, stress is not proportional to strain. Okay, folks, so hopefully all of this makes sense. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below. Thank you.